So, it, so it's uh, not necessarily but, true that we can't do business with family. <laughs> it's not necessarily true. I think it's all about boundaries and expectations. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Wall Street. Black Wall Street. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Black. And now, here's your host, Blair Durham. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, welcome, welcome to this 35th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. Our sponsor for the month of May is Milestone Mental Health Agency. As you all know, uh, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and it's certainly important. Whereas only one in five or 18 percent of the general population meet the criteria for a mental health illness, almost three in four or 72 percent of entrepreneurs meet the criteria. So we want to just make sure that we are empowering one another to um have the best possible mental health. There are seven ways to manage anxiety according to Milestone Mental Health Agency. One, journaling will help reduce anxious feelings. Write down your anxious thoughts, get them out of your mind and onto paper. Number two, create a list of people you can call on to support you when you're feeling anxious. Number three, self-care is an important way to help manage stress and anxiety. Take care of yourself. And a lot of times people think when we say self-care, we mean going to the spa or something of that sort. We really just mean having a routine. That means you get outside every day. You're taking a shower. You're doing those things that, um, you know, that, that keep you healthy. You're drinking water, right? Number four, sleeping can help fight the feeling of anxiety and the impact that it has on your mood. Number five, exercise is a very important way to reduce stress and anxiety. When you're feeling anxious, take a run to free your mind. Number six, practicing slow, deep breaths can help slow down your anxious thoughts. That's when we commonly overlook, but breathing is helpful. And number seven, listening to your favorite song or podcast can help shift your focus, improve your mood, and help you relax. It's important to take care of yourself and protect your mental health. Okay, super excited. Today, we are focused on solving problems through entrepreneurship. And our guests run the gamut from authors to uh, lawmakers and even shoemakers. How exciting. Very recently, I was having a conversation about the purpose of entrepreneurship with someone that leads an innovation center in our region. And she talked about how our community has not really embraced the principle of entrepreneurship as a means of solving problems. That's a very real passion of hers. In fact, we will feature Ms. Akosia Nwala at the next Black Brand General Body Meeting on June 8th to have a conversation about problem solving and to learn about the Lean Startup Methodology. For more information on our events, whether you reside in our broadcast area or have plans to travel to Hampton Roads, uh, I invite you to follow us on social media at Black Wall Street Today and at Black Brand Biz on Facebook and Instagram. Again, it's at Black Wall Street Today and at Black Brand Biz on Facebook as well as Instagram. Our first guest is Miss Bay. She is the founder and creative director of Geneva Bari Nude Footwear LLC. Geneva Bari is a luxury skin tone shoe line with an objective of revolutionizing and redefining the meaning of nude shoes from beige to skin tone colors that match the wearer's complexion. Before launching her namesake shoe line, Geneva worked exclusively as an attorney and has been licensed with the State Bar of Texas since 2014. Geneva is also a published author, and her topics range from environmental issues to humanitarian rights. As a wife and mother of two boys, Geneva loves her family and enjoys spending time with friends, dreaming up new shoe designs, and going to the spa. Miss Bay, welcome. How are you? Well, good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. Thanks so much for joining us today. I was so excited to see your shoe line come across Black News on Facebook. And I was just hoping you would share with us and really talk us through uh, the elements of manufacturing and distribution. So a lot of us have great ideas, right? How did you leverage your idea to get the support that you needed to bring it to reality? Oh, uh, cool. That's, that's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> that's so a big question. Right now, right? I, I, I don't even want to begin, but right now we, we still um, have not manufactured or we're in the process of manufacturing the shoes. 
So we're still in the pre-order phase, and we do not have an inventory at this time. Um, okay. But finding a manufacturer was the hardest um, by far uh, for our brand, mm-hmm. and we found one uh, last May, um, a year ago, mm-hmm. and we are plugging away with the prototype. And okay. uh, our first production run will be completed um, in July. Wow, that is so exciting! First production run completed in this coming July, you said? Yes, this July. Mm-hmm. Well, congratulations to you. That's a great segue to my next question, which has to do with the prototyping process. Uh, What can you just, can you talk us through sort of what that looked like? I know you've got what, how many, how many colors does your um, line have? We have 13 shades of nude. 13 shades of nude, wow. And we'll be adding um, hopefully two more shades by the end of the year. And um, the process of prototyping, which is very it was a very long process. We've done four um, prototypes from when we started because we wanted to make sure it's right and we wanted to make sure that the shoes are not only beautiful but comfortable. And um, so we received our last prototype um, in February. And after that, then we were um, ready to essentially launch it and um, start the manufacturing process. But it's very... I'm a little bit of a type A personality, Mm -hmm. so I wanted everything to be just right uh, because you have to take pride in what you do, and if the shoes look amazing, people will buy it. And um, not only that, but it also serves a purpose. They're not just beautiful. They are skin tone, as you've already alluded to, Mm -hmm. and they're luxury, too, because they're made in, um, they're Italian-made, and they're made with with 100% Italian sourced leather. So oh, wow. uh, it's just bringing, yeah, the whole package together and, you know, and the inclusivity of it all as well. And we are very proud of that. What did you say? Say that last part again. We're very proud of the inclusivity of our brand. Oh, yes. Yes, Our yes, brand, yes. by definition, is inclusive. We're the most um, diverse and inclusive luxury skin tone shoe line on the market. I know that's a mouthful, but... <laughs> But um, that's that's what our brand is, and we're very we're very proud of that. Wow, I, I'm super proud. So, what kind of team do you have to put together to take on something of this magnitude? I know that you already have sort of the legal skill set, but who else was necessary in order to help bring this vision to fruition? Well, I've got um, three other team members. I have my partner, who also happens to be my husband. Um, he is very good with numbers and financing and things like that. Um, I also have um, my little sister who's in charge of, she's basically my assistant and she's charged with helping with the day-to-day functions. Um, I also have um, a web developer who, you know, it's her, it's her job to make sure the website looks great and optimized. I also have a social media assistant who um, helps manage our social media accounts. And we have a digital marketing agency. And then there's me. Um, and basically, I delegate and make sure everyone is uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing. So that way, the whole the whole uh, thing comes together. So I do have um, a team. I have a team of trusted people. And that's very, 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 very important when you have a brand. Because my, my name is on the brand. I am my brand. Mm-hmm. So everything needs to be in um, tip-top shape and there has to be a pride in what we're doing so we have all these people working together and um, you know helping us push forward so I have a really good team and I'm very 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 happy and fortunate to have that has that been a process Miss Bay um, you know developing this really good team I know a lot of us struggle with um, finding those people that are going to be people that we can trust we may start with one group and wind up with another group Uh, but it sounds like you had some initial success in terms of um, finding a team that would work well is that is that true oh yeah um i everyone we started with was still um still with me and part of that too because some of them are my closest family (laughs) yeah so so it's Uh, not necessarily true that we can't do business with family (laughs) it's not necessarily true i think it's all about boundaries and expectations and A lot of times, um, relationships 
business or romantic or otherwise fail because of unmet expectations or uncommunicated expectation. Um, that's not a word, but <laughs> but I'm with you. It, it's more it's more or less of this I, as the founder and the CEO. This is what I expect. Are you able to deliver my expectation? If yes, we can proceed. If no, then we need to find another plan. Um, and so we are on the same page because then if someone drops the ball, you know, hey, I asked you if you can deliver. You told me you could. Mm-hmm. And what's happening? We need to revisit this if this is not working. So it's um, make, make, making sure expectations on both ends are met. Um, what I expect them to do and then what they expect from me, whether it's paying, timely payment or, um, you know, being a, a good boss, a good CEO, a good leader. Um, it, you know, it's just about keeping an open line of communication and make sure everyone's needs and expectations are met. Yeah, makes sense makes sense if you're just tuning in uh, this is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street today our show is focused on solving problems through entrepreneurship and to that end we're speaking with Miss Bay who is the founder and creative director of Geneva Bari nude footwear um, wow just super uh, excited to have you uh, I want to ask you this so I know that you know you, you, you talked about sort of the pre-order phase and um, the process of finding someone who would manufacture your luxury shoe line. Wh- where do you see it going from there? Are you looking to uh, maintain distribution sort of as an online um, deal or, or or how is it going to develop? We are uh, solely going to do um, direct to consumer um, because our shoes are um, Shoes of the same quality tend to be more expensive with the markup. And when we keep it strictly to direct the consumer, um, we are actually passing those savings on to our, our consumers. Um, <clears throat> one thing I do not want to have is to have a good quality product that people who want are not able to access. So um, part of that, and part of this inclusivity and diversity of my brand is thinking about the socioeconomic status of my buyers. Sure. And I do understand that as a professional woman, a lot of professionals might be able to go in and pay $295 for the pumps, which is the retail price currently. Mm-hmm. Um, there, you know, there are discounts that customers could take advantage of to lower the price. But overall, um, you know, some people might be able to do that without breaking the bank and it's not a big deal for them. But there are other people that, you know, that might be a stretch to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So we try to keep the cost down by doing it direct to consumer and also have flexible payment plans and also um, have, you know, coupon codes that consumers can use. We're teaming up with a company called Klerna Mm -hmm. to be able to afford flexible payment plans for consumers where they don't have to pay all of it right away and it's interest-free, um to do so. So we were really working that end to make sure if you if you want this pump and a lot of people do based on the feedback we receive, you should be able to afford it. And that's our goal. Awesome. We've got another minute and a half, uh, minute and a half remaining, Miss Bay. If you could just let people know where they can find your shoes, um, how can we pre order and anything else you want to share in closing. Yes, so you can find um, this pump right now at Geneva Barry. So it's J E N E B A B A R R I E dot com. And you can pre order on that site. Uh, we're on Facebook at Geneva Barry Footwear. And then we're also on Instagram at Geneva underscore Barry. And Geneva Barry is J E N E B A. And Barry is B A R R I E dot com. Got it. And some folks may be wondering, how can they get the perfect tone match buying online? Um, well, we also have a swatch book for um, customers. And um, they order the swatch book and they swatch themselves and then purchase. So that way, um, at, you know, for a, a product of this price point, you want to make sure you get it right. Oh, absolutely. And so, mm-hmm, and so when you get the the swatch book you can actually take time 
swatch yourself and then order. And then the, the price of the swatch book is credited towards your pump order as well. So you're not, you're not, you know, paying a swatch book. So that's the price of a pump. That price is added when you're actually ready to order a pair of shoes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miss Bay. We got your website, Jenneba Bari. Uh, J-E-N-E-V-A-B-A-R-R-I-E dot com. We will certainly be supporting you and looking forward to uh, hearing wonderful stories about your success. Thanks again for uh, for coming on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day. You as well. And when we return, we'll have two uh, featured guests for our Add This to the List panel. You don't want to miss information about an upcoming Minority Women Business Enterprise Expo, as well as uh, a attorney who is now going to be serving in the House of Delegates. I am so excited to welcome attorney Don Scott to our show. As a former U.S. Naval officer, attorney Don Scott understands integrity, service, and sacrifice. In 2015, Don founded the law office of Don Scott. He's represented over a thousand clients fighting for justice. Don is very active in his community and sits on several boards and commissions, including Future of Hampton Roads, the first vice president of the Southeastern Employment and Training Association, and he's also a commissioner for the Portsmouth Economic Development Association, amongst several other organizations. Most recently, Don Scott is the candidate for the 80th district seat for the House of Delegates. Welcome, welcome, Attorney Scott. How are you? Thank you so much, man. I call you Blair, and you can just call me Don. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. Wow. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, and I hope that we can have some fun here for the next uh, few moments. Yes, we can. So this came up rather quickly. It did. It did. Boom. So, it's a couple of things. Uh, first of all, I, I like the topic around entrepreneurship. As an attorney, and you, when you first start off, it's always challenges to start a new business. And I hope folks who are listening, you know, there are some checklists that you ought to take every time. And I'll, I'll get into the candidacy stuff, but I also okay. want folks to... Drop some nuggets. I definitely want <laughs> folks to take into account what you need to do to protect yourself. One of the biggest issues with new businesses starting off is they don't have the appropriate protection from any liability. Mm-hmm. So I always ask folks to make sure you go in, check the State Corporation Commission website, make sure your entity name is not taken. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to su- be sued because you use somebody else's name. Yes. Uh, if, because sometimes people just start doing business as a name that they think is cute. And guess what? Somebody else thought of it already. And so uh, right. I was just telling one of our members late last week about that name distinguishability Mm -hmm. portion on that SEC website. Yeah. So go to the SEC site. Uh, uh, If you're going to have partnerships, make sure you have a partnership uh, agreement or an operating agreement if you're an LLC Mm -hmm. and you need to think about what type of entity you want to be. And I'm sure all of these issues have been spoken about uh, uh, on this show before, knowing how thorough you are. But This bears repeating. I always (laughs) want to, you know, I see folks come in all the time and say, this is what happened to me. And I say, oh my God. And then the last thing, and I think it's really important is make sure you write appropriate insurance. Mm-hmm. Insurance is in place of uh, uh, what they say, an uh, 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 ounce of prevention prevents a pound of pain. So that insurance is important uh, to get ahead of time so you can always be protected and you won't have any of your personal assets taken because of a business decision. So mm-hmm. I always separate that. But uh, yeah, this 80th house seat thing came up very quickly. It came up very quickly. Uh, my good I had friend, to do my own research. I'm like, yeah, what happened? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my good friend Matthew James got an opportunity to go work. He was the um, delegate, Delegate James, for the 80th house seat. And uh, he got a job uh, offer that he couldn't refuse. You know, Godfather got an offer he couldn't refuse from the governor yeah. to go and uh, help assist uh, and help him bring and grow the business environment here in the state of Virginia. Okay. Especially got around it. helping minority business development. That's what Matthew's good at. That's his background. He's a Hampton grad, um, Northwestern uh, MBA a very sharp individual and his expertise and his passion is around economic development so it's a great fit for him wow so is that the position that just became open I think it was a what did he call it that came out of the governor's office just saw it it was an announcement yeah it was a couple of weeks ago that it was announced and that's what Matthew and and he's actually in the governor's uh, office uh, set up now He's doing a very good job and already hitting the ground running, as he, as we know, uh, Matthew Wood. But I'm happy that uh, to hopefully have the opportunity to take the baton in the 80th House uh, District and do the work that he had begun. Uh, the city of Portsmouth has a lot of different challenges. We're kind of being squeezed by the tolls now. Mm-hmm. We have to do something about these tolls. I mean, as I look at the contracts and I talk to people every day, I just got a text message of a photo of a toll bill from someone asking me, 
to help them get rid of the fines and the cost. And they only went through back and forth a few times, but over time it's grown. And this is a first responder. Mm-hmm. This is a person who, you know, works in our community mm-hmm. doing public service. And these folks are being impacted disproportionately. Uh, these tolls don't care about race. They don't Definitely care about, you not. know, we don't have any issues. Postman has issues with this toll. We have to do something about it. Uh, if you take a look at the contract, if, if someone would have challenged this early on, the contract is unconscionable because of the way the property is set up. We have to do something about the tolls. That's why I want to go to Richmond just to take a look and see what we can do. We have statues that have been put in place regarding these tolls. I know that's a priority. That's the number one priority for me when I go to Richmond. Because my understanding the tolls. is that, company. I mean, it's a it's a privately held... It was a so-called public-private partnership venture that the state wow. and this private entity entered into, and they have guaranteed profit with guaranteed uh, increases each and every year, and uh, we have to do something about it, and I think that's what uh, that's, that's, that's what my, I intend to do, because I think it's squeezing the city and isolating the city, Definitely. because the rest of the, the region has grown in population. That, that was just a population study I just looked at. Mm-hmm. The rest of the region is growing incrementally. Portsmouth is, is going the, the wrong way. Mm-hmm. And that's because it's a it's a it's a barrier. And those tolls are the barrier if to go in or to go out. Right. And there and then and, and it and it influences behavior. Money influences behavior. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that people start doing. They start it's inefficient. You gotta go around, you gotta go this way to try to avoid those costs. So we have to do something about that and we also have to make sure um, my friend Gwen Davis, who was just here, yeah, she's doing a timing. fantastic job. She's <laughs> yeah. doing a fantastic job. She's going to be hosting that event next Friday. I'll be there. Uh, I think we need to make sure that the not only is there economic development, but there's economic equity. Mm-hmm. That means everybody in the community gets to participate. Mm-hmm. You know, they say rise and mm-hmm. tide lift all boats. All boats. So we want everybody to participate and not just the, uh, the the usual suspects. I think we need to get everybody involved and educated and get them in a position to participate in what I believe about post. But I think that region is ready for resilience. I think it's the the area that has you know hadn't been developed the way we do. We have a, an economic development team. I'm a commissioner with the Economic Development Authority. I think we have a team in place now that realizes what we can get done, and we're about to do that. I think the city's ready to explode on the waterfront. It's going to grow, and yeah. I want to be a part of it. I've seen some the of those city. plans. It is pretty exciting. It's exciting, and, and I, I think, think it's the a missing pieces. What you said about getting these tolls, you know. Good grief. Yeah, gotta get As a force of resident, I'm just like, this is. Oh, yo, you a force of resident? Oh, you got to vote for me. Oh, I, can I say that? Yeah, you got to vote for me. Where you vote? Yeah. <laughs> I vote at Parkview Elementary School. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. School. You in my district. I need you there. I want to see you there. I need you at that Absolutely. caucus. That's going to be a caucus June 1st. June 1st. Yeah, not what's, the 11th. Right? Yeah, what, what happened when Matthew resigned? Uh oh. I got to run in my deadline. I'm so sorry. Okay, y'all. Go on my, go on my Facebook page. Yes. Uh, tell go us on my Facebook. You can go on Facebook. You can hit me individually, Don Scott, but my Facebook page is Friends of Don Scott, Friends of Don Scott, and like my page, and then you can follow along and see everything that's going on uh, in re- in regard to this matter. And I really want to thank you for having me today. I want to thank I'm, you I'm, for coming I'm, on the I'm show. I'm happy to come back anytime. Super excited. And I yes. think we are. Uh, we'll think, talk more. Yes, I think we're in an exciting time in Portsmouth, and uh, we just you know we're gonna we're gonna. Um, Get the right leaders in place and the right team members. I got a great team around me. Yeah, and uh, that's what you have to do. You have to get good people around you. That's how. That's how you uh, you get good information, good advice, and they and they check you. you got to have people on your team that want to that'll gut check you if you're going astray. And I'm yeah. asking the, the entire community promote help me. And if I'm if I go offline, check you. Gut check me. I okay. can take I have broad right. shoulders. We got it. I appreciate you, Don Scott, and we certainly look forward to all the wonderful things you've talked about that are so needed for the city of Portsmouth. Thanks again for your time. I just want to reiterate a couple of announcements that I've already made. I know that a lot of you are tuning in on your lunch breaks. Again, happening today in the city of Virginia Beach, Councilwoman Sabrina Wooten is hosting Fighting the Disparity. Okay, Sandler Center at 6 p.m. She's providing an overview of the disparity study results as well as recommendations. Um, I also want to note that uh, Donna Whitaker, who is a member of Pharrell Williams team, uh, she will be he will be I'm sorry, she will be on hand to discuss implications for small business owners and something in the water 2020. And then I did want to reiterate as well, the city of Hampton has announced its Grow Your Small Business Conference in partnership with the Virginia Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. That event is taking place on Wednesday, June the 5th. 
and you can register online if you have questions about registration. My understanding is that they have already registered some 250 participants to the event. Uh, Erica.Spencer, E-R-I-C-A dot S-P-E-N-C-E-R at Hampton.gov. I want to welcome our next guest to the show. We are rolling today, y'all. Mr. Royal Governor is a public speaker and an advocate for financial planning and business ownership. Through his business, Royal Crown Holdings, Royal Governor is on a mission to educate youth and their parents on the importance of leaving a legacy and how to turn a passion into a business that can last generations. Royal is recently published as a co-author of the 21 day success plan for young entrepreneurs and their influencers. When I think about our topic for today's show, which focuses on solving problems through entrepreneurship, certainly one of the greatest challenges that we face as a community is lack of financial literacy. We just don't understand the principles of business. I mean, we've been systematically locked out, right? And so uh, a book such as yours and the work that you're doing, I want to say thank you and welcome to the show. Thank you, Blair, for having me on today. What an exciting moment. I know. It's a pleasure. I feel like so, I'm about to cry. <laughs> don't cry. We're just having a good time. So, talk to me about sort of how you got into this work and your inspiration for putting this book together. Uh, it's a, it's, what inspired me is what's going on in our community, the African American community. Mm-hmm. The lack of responsibility dealing with finances. And then we go to funeral services where people don't have enough to even cover the funerals and don't have anything left behind for their children and children. I'm sorry. You're all right. You're all right. Children are just been stuck with nothing to live on. They've been put into other family homes, um, different environments where they've just been pushed out into the world and nothing to lean on. And it's very important that with 2.6 million businesses owned by African Americans, that wow. we leave something behind. If we want to leave something powerful, such as a legacy, that's a business principle by itself, leaving a legacy. Mm-hmm. Leaving a legacy, so... Good point you raise. Because a lot of times we just kind of throw that around, you know. Oh, I want to leave a legacy. No, that's a that's a financial planning yes, it's principle. A, yeah, principle. And I wrote that in on that, in my assigned chapter where I chose that topic. It is a wise man leaves an inheritance for their children. Their children's children. Children, children. It's supposed to go from generation to generation. We're not supposed to be selling off our businesses mm-hmm. to a to somebody to buy out because we see a struggle. We gonna go to we should do it as as a last resort Mm -hmm. so that we know that we made some effort to keep the business going in our names, in our family's names. Just like Mm -hmm. Sam Walton and Mm -hmm. um, other um, philosophy philanthropists. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm following you. (laughs) Yeah. But I'm just saying that it's crazy out here that we're just selling off and we're not leaving anything behind. And then families end up in probate court mm. arguing over the business or what we're going to... It should be wills out there. It's, it's so many resources that we can tap into, but we have to be willing to go that extra mile. Mm-hmm. So it won't be no embarrassment out here Mm -hmm. I hear you saying because you used a strong word when you first started the lack of responsibility right it's a lack of responsibility and when I think about responsibility I think about the ability to choose an appropriate response yes right and what you're saying is we have that choice now we have a lot of choices we have there's no excuses out here yeah there's no excuses yeah and in my book the 21 day success plan I talk about leaving a legacy I went to recently in Washington D.C. and and a strong example is this family had this house for 70 years and now they rent it out as Airbnb that's a good thing for 70 years most people don't get past 
certain amount of years. I'm not giving a specific number, but as we know, the foreclosure market is tied into all of this stuff about leaving legacies. Yeah. Let me ask you this. What is your plan for getting this book (laughs) into the hands of our young people? There's no excuse for me. I'm surrounded by people every day that's looking for business. Besides my website, worldgovernor.com, I attend a lot of meetings where, such as Black Brand, Black Brand, um, you ask, what's the plan? Just keep marketing and marketing. Surround yourself with like-minded people just like me, and this book will get all across the globe. You want to see this book on, you want to see this book as a part of a curriculum? Curriculum, conferences, public speaking engagements in the hands, like changing hands, like going all around the world into the hands of people that wants to, want to learn to grow their business, even if they just starting. You got to start from somewhere, so. I definitely want to make an appeal on your behalf to our listeners. Um, having had the 21 Day Success Plan in my possession for probably 30 days or more, um, I've taken a look at it. Um, you've got some awesome content that's there. So um, if you're someone that's listening that has access to um, young burgeoning entrepreneurs that might need this information, contact Royal Governor about how you can obtain uh, discounted copies, um, how you can participate as a wholesale wholesaler of his book, yes. uh, royalgovernor.com. Did you want to provide a phone number as well? 202-308-4555. Um, just leave a message or send a quick text or you can email me at royalgovernor82 at gmail.com. Okay. I'm telling you it's important that. that you leave a legacy for your children's children's children. It's probably the wisest thing you can do. The wisest yeah. thing you can do. If you want a powerful legacy, if you want your name to last forever, just leave the legacy. And train up a child in the way they should go. That's a part of it. That's how your legacy will last. Leaving, training up that child or that family, that group of individuals that you feel that can carry on. But if you train them young, I believe you're legacy have a stronger chance of surviving. Yeah. I think it's a good point that you raised when I think about just the household where I grew up. You know, we did not have conversations about finance. And I'm sure you can attest to that. I'm sure our producer can attest to the fact that we didn't sit around and talk about money. You know, you go into other communities that was the, the kitchen topic. table discussion. Yes. When we're out here playing golf and when we're doing whatever we're talking about. So so now this generation is having to both acquire the information and pass it on to their children at the same time. Right. So it's not information that we necessarily had. Yes. It's, you know? Yes. And so you talk about something that's for youth, you know, we kind of need to read it first. <laughs> right. Make sure we've absorbed it. Yeah, absorb Make sure it. we have our things in place and then... You know, certainly pass it on to our children. So That's right. I thank you for, you know, highlighting that. Um, this is real. Relax. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chill. I'm chill. I'm just, I'm just, just I know thinking you're... the next thing to say. I'm very emotional because it's, it's a blessing to be here, you know. <laughs> it's a blessing to have you. And I'm glad that we got connected uh, because you know that I do work with young entrepreneurs. Yes. Certainly, we want to be able to be in a position to pass this book on to the children that we work with. Um, so I'm just grateful that, you know, you put in this work. Yes, it took some effort. To and just thinking about what you just said, you didn't have this conversation. Only you seen was the insurance man coming to pick up the The insurance man came check. faithfully. And I didn't even faithfully. know what that meant. Yeah, no. You didn't know you just saw this just white or was... beige envelope. Yeah. Or some blood test been getting done. But sometimes those those things don't even last long because the struggle within the community, the African American community, you know, pick up the check and you don't know if it's the right insurance or the wrong insurance or what. You just know it's there. But sometimes it laps and then like people will borrow from that insurance. And just not to enough, make ends meet. And yeah, just to make ends meet, but it wouldn't be enough when it's time to go bury your loved ones. So what you're gonna do, bury your 
person and uh, your loved one in a um, pine box or get them cremated if you even got the money for that. Or you're going to go around with asking for donations. And let me say something while I'm on air. Go find me account. It's not a legacy. Buying rims and all this stuff is not leaving a legacy. It's not. Expensive stuff is not a legacy. We're talking about putting $25 to $50 a month. It, whatever your habit may be, substituting your habit to make your child's or family member's future better than what it is. Put it in a mutual fund account. Roll it over in the stock market. And don't touch it unless you, have an, extreme, you. Unless you have an extreme emergency. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you. Thank you for your passion. I think we all could feel that. <laughs> this is great. Really quickly, I'll reiterate on your behalf. Just contact information. Um, if you're interested in purchasing or wholesaling um, Royal's book, The 21 Day Success Plan for Young Entrepreneurs and Influencers, it's royalgovernor.com. R-O-Y-A-L-G-O-V-E-R-N-O-R.com. His telephone number is 202-308-4555. And he can also be emailed at royalgovernor82 at gmail.com. Again, that's royalgovernor82 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Thank you, Blair, for having me. Absolutely. We'll have you on again. We look forward to much success in the distribution of your book. Yes. We're yes. going to reach the top where everyone will win. <laughs> yes, indeed. Absolutely. Okay, and we'll be back in just a moment with some information about how you can celebrate uh, 400 years of African Americans uh, on this soil. We'll talk in a moment. I know. I didn't. Sorry. I totally forgot where we were in the show. Out there. Wow. Important business insights are on the way. Stay locked in. Black Wall Street Today will be right back after these messages. The OSHA Lifelong Learning Institute at Hampton University offers non-credit courses to mature adults 50 and older who want to improve their skills, explore new ideas, and interact with interesting peers in their community. Call today at 757-727-5434. That's 727-5434. Or stop by at the W.O. Lawton Building, 1006 Settlers Landing Road, Suite G. Keeping you informed. We are the essence of HU 88.1 WHOV. Well, I finally improved my credit score. What? The band is about to be discovered. Rock gods don't need to worry about credit scores. We're supposed to think about how many guitars we've smashed, make ridiculous on-tour requests, tragically break up and blame creative differences. Yeah, I'm not banking my retirement on a band that's never left your garage. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Come to the Hampton University Museum and Archive. Free and open to the public, travel back in time and enjoy the masterpieces from the 19th century, the Harlem Renaissance, and even contemporary movements such as Africobra. We are home to the largest public collection of African-American art. You can also admire the museum's special gems like the Liberty Pin, used by Abraham Lincoln to sign the Emancipation Proclamation. Founded in 1868, we're the country's oldest African-American museum. Explore our 10 galleries of fine art from Pacific Islander to African to Native American. We also welcome students and educators to find over 10 million primary documents and photographs for curriculum research. We take pride in our national treasure and hope you do too. Call 757-727-5308 or visit museum at hamptonu.edu for more information and events. Keeping you informed, we are the essence of HU 88.1 WHO. And now, more Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham on Smooth 88.1 WHOV. Welcome, welcome back to Black Wall Street Today. Man, this has been an exciting 35th edition. We are back with Dr. Vanessa Thaxton Ward. Yes, and you are with Hampton University's Museum? Yes, I'm the director of the University Museum. Wow, I know you have some uh, important information to share with us regarding 
1619 and a huge event coming up with the city. Would you share with us? Sure. Um, of course, the state of Virginia, as well as the city of Hampton, we've been commemorating the 1619 um, event. And for the city of Hampton, we are really focusing on the African arrival. And yes. so many of the um, I've served on the city of Hampton commission uh, to plan events. So one of the events uh, or the museum has focused on two events from January um, until this past May, we had an exciting exhibition called Ain't I America? And it was um, selected work from the collection of a private collector, uh, Jim Petrucci, who was based in New Jersey. And wow. we had a guest curator, Dr. John Welch, who used to work at the Chrysler Museum, to curate this exhibition where he focused on, on based on Sojourner Truth's um, speech, Ain't I America? I think it was Sojourner Truth. <laughs> That all um, good. <laughs> <laughs> We're just live on the radio. No big exactly. deal. <laughs> Quoting people that may have the wrong quote, but it's been a long one. Um, but however, we looked at uh, America's contribution uh, to or African Americans' contribution to America, particularly women, uh, race relations. So it was a very exciting exhibition because he pulled um, pieces from contemporary artists. He pulled pieces from contemporary artists as well as well-known artists like Charles White, Elizabeth Catlett, uh, John Biggers. And these are some of the names that you will see in the University Museum's collection. Okay. Because, of course, we share 200 years of African-American fine art as a part of our permanent collection. Wow. So that exhibition um, was uh, closed right after commencement, Hampton University's okay. commencement. And so we are right now in the process of developing and curating another exhibition called A Taste for the Beautiful, African Impact on American Culture. Whoa, that sounds exciting. Is there food involved or? Well, we do plan to do a little. (laughs) (laughs) I know A Taste for the Beautiful actually comes from a title that um, of a book that we have in the museum that looks at our African collection. But what we're doing with this exhibit, we have three contemporary African artists. One, uh, Professor Ampo Foanti, who is here on campus. He's from Ghana. Okay. And then we have two professors from Norfolk State University, um, Solomon Isikiji and Okala. And they are wonderful artists. So they will showcase some of their contemporary art. And then we're combining that with, of course, our permanent collection of African art. And then we have contemporary pieces, um, basically from the 1960s, which is considered contemporary African art. And we have um, combined that with works from John Biggers, who was one of the first African-American artists to go into Africa, and then to begin to use those patterns and different things in his art. So we're trying to show that... uh, you know, the continuity and how Africans have impacted America. And we're just doing it through the arts right now. Huge. And so is there a Sankofa Day of Remembrance happening as well in conjunction with these things? Yes. As I indicated, the entire city of Hampton, different organizations and groups are having various programs throughout. Really, we started in January with programs. Sure. Now the big culminating event, of course, will be in August. Um, at Fort Monroe, but there are different activities. And so the Sankofa event is one. Um, We've had a day of prayer, day of healing, all kinds of things. Uh, Is there a a hub for information on all the different things that the city is doing? Yes. um, With the Hampton Convention and Visitors Bureau, if you go to their site, um, there is a list. They also have uh, publications out all over. As well as probably if you go to Fort Monroe's site. I don't feel like people have been talking about this enough. You know, I'm like, this is huge. It is very huge. (laughs) Yeah. It is really amazing that, um, well, the city is so full of history. Of Mm -hmm. course, the state of Virginia is. But the city of Hampton is jam-packed with history. And so we Let me just reiterate really quickly. It was the Hampton Convention and Visitors Bureau website where we can get information Mm -hmm. on all the different events. Okay. You were saying, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just saying how much history we have in this yeah. in this region mm-hmm. and right here in, in the city of Hampton. And so 
there's something you can do probably every weekend that tie will tie in to the 1619 commemoration. I like the approach that that you've taken in terms of working with the art side of it. it seems oh. like it's not as perhaps not as stressful. <laughs> I know some of us are working on the. <laughs> no, yeah, because you can probably see some pretty. You know, it's exciting, and I love all of my artists. It's exciting working with living artists mm -hmm. um, because they all are working. They're working um, artists, and so. Um, but I cannot wait for this exhibit. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be educational. Do we have dates for the exhibit? The exhibit will, um, we're having a soft opening, which means it opens to the public, but we will not have the reception. On, uh, so that would be June 17th. Okay. And then in the fall, we will have a opening reception when all of our students are back in place. And that will be in September. And then around November, we plan to have a big event when you talked about is there food involved um, we would like to <laughs> I mean with um, a name like a taste yeah, for a the taste. beautiful I mean <laughs> we're going to have our artists to come in um, I've asked Dr. Kimberly Gant from the um, Chrysler Museum who is a specialist in African art to serve as our moderator we'll have our artists there I'd like to have a fashion show with African um, fashions and a taste of African cuisine so we're well, working let's stay on connected. that. That's, I might yeah. have a have a resource for you oh, good. on the African fashion show. Okay, yes. Yeah, okay. Awesome, awesome. Any closing words? Is there a website you want to send us to or um, yeah, any way we can get in contact with you? Or? Sure. Would definitely like to invite you all to go to the Hampton University Museum's website. Like us on Facebook. And the museum is open Monday through Friday from 8 until 5. Saturdays, noon until four. We are free and open to the public. We definitely accept donations. And we have a wonderful museum store. So we invite I love you to museum visit. stores. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, well, thank Dr. Daxton Ward. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. I look forward to having you back and uh, certainly visiting the museum and being a part of some of these other upcoming events. Thank Thanks you. so much. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of closing words from our sponsor, uh, Milestone Mental Health Agency. <clears throat> Again, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, and just a note here that says that clinical depression is very common. There are more than 3 million U.S. cases per year. Clinical depression, also called major depression, is a mental health disorder characterized by persistently depressed mood or loss of, loss of interest in activities causing significant impairment in daily life. The mainstay of treatment is usually medication, talk therapy, or a combination of the two. Seek help. You are not alone. Around this time of year, you will find uh, all kinds of different walks, walks for depression, walks for uh, suicide. And these are just encouragements to uh, be engaged with community, even as you may be dealing with depression or some other uh, impacting mental health issue. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this, this edition. Excuse me. My tongue has been tied, but I do want to announce that next week we are focused on the business of food service. We're going to be talking with the owners of Cutlass Girl Restaurant as well as Mango Mango. Um, so if you are someone who is interested in starting a restaurant, a food truck, or otherwise getting into that business, phenomenal. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. Black, black Wall Street. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black, black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black, black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black, black. Black Wall Street.